Welcome back guys uh, to another YouTube video at Nexus Green. Um, today's video you're going to see a load of stuff in the field where we've got people training the farmers on how to use the system to show them what kind of value crops we're going to be helping them to produce uh, using the solar irrigation system. So you're going to see a whole load of things in this video that is going to be really educational to understand what the true meaning of why we're doing solar irrigation for this project and how it's going to benefit the farmers and essentially the country as well. So come with me and let's go for this journey. I'll see you in a minute. to check out the irrigation system and also cut out some uh, O&M preparation and maintenance. I'm so excited for this journey. I'm going to do some uh, mistakes on the site. We will get some good details about the site. I want to park here. This project is enhancing uh, farmers' ability to produce more. The government of Uganda is uh, assisting farmers by providing solar-powered water pumping systems for their agricultural produce. So what you see here is a garden of uh, passion fruits and the, the capacity of the farmer to produce throughout the year has been enhanced by providing water to the passion fruits and so many other crops. Yeah, we're close to. So I'm going to add one. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add one. In the modern world, farmers are now enhancing uh, their ability to produce through providing uh, artificial irrigation. Irrigation is, uh, pro is the method of providing water to crops, pumping water from water sources like rivers, lakes, swamps, or even borehole. What you see here is a set of uh, valves that have been set for the weather sprays. Here we are only irrigating the crops at the roots. This method of irrigation helps to reduce water wastage. So the flash valve is to remove the dirt of the line, the dirt that, can, that is in the line. From there, the Clean. Okay, so if you open, you see the water starts dirty until it cleans up. Then you close. So you open. We flush the main line. So as you open, more, you can look at the water. <clears throat> you see what is there. But some of these things you see are because uh, maybe the, the system was not flushed. So when they were installing, these ones were going there when they were installing. The purpose of this is that Amazi, the gas of Kasura, the Trimukoza system, you know, the sun is being washed up to here. So whatever is there is being thrown out. Yeah, we normally don't want to put time, but every time you feel like you need to clean, you do, then you create your own program. So you can run it for a few minutes until you see no, no dirt, then you close. They will be able to irrigate all the crops around here. The system is still being constructed, so this is a one way of minimizing water wastage. <laughs> 
We are now going to the pump house. The system is designed to pump about 40 cubic of water. It uses modern equipment, low lens technology. We have a full tank shut off and dry land protection. So we are going through the uh, cabbage plantation, as you see. The farmer is able to produce cabbages throughout the year because he's able to irrigate his, his cabbages, even in the dry season. This is the heart of the solar pumping system. It uses the power of the sun, which we call renewable energy. The facility is well built by Nexus Green. What you see here, these are solar panels that have been installed to provide energy for the pump. This system uses 330 watt solar panels, which are installed on the array structures. They are inclined at an angle to allow natural cleaning, but also to maximize the collection of the energy. You need to orient uh, the pan at an angle of about 15 degrees. We have the PV disconnect here. Uh, this is where we connect the panels, both in series and parallel, to prov provide the power that we need. This is the alarm control panel. It's a very good system called Light Sun. It uses optical fiber, which you run on all the panels you want to protect. The idea of using this is that in case of any tampering, in case someone tries to remove the panel, the alarm comes on. So let's try and see to open this system. I see. Already, there's alarm that someone is what? Is tampering with the system. So let's now try to disarm this. Eh? How disarmed it? That's the first way of what? Of testing the what? The system. Now, your installation will involve what we call auxiliary lighting system. The auxiliary lighting system comprises of the following one, the inverter. This inverter is 1,500 watts. It provides AC power from DC and it lights the bulbs. It also provides power to the alarm system. It comprises of the MPPT charge regulator. The MPPT charge regulator picks power from the solar panels, which are on top of the roof, and then charges the batteries. The batteries have been wired in series as you see because this inverter is a 24 volt inverter you can access this controller on your phone using a smart tech a smart device so this is what we use we call a smart device the moment you log in you are able to see so i'll click on it and i'll be able to access the operation of the controller This is technology at its best. You are having a kilowatt input, three kilowatt, which we are getting from the solar panels. We are having flow rate of 12.9 cubic. We are pumping about 13 cubic per hour. The wellhead of the system is very, very important. As you see here, we have uh, air release valve. The air release valve will help to release air in the pipeline. Then we have the water meter. The water meter will record the amount of water. That water meter will be running as pumping takes place. The non return valve is preventing water flow from the storage back into this is the source because it can be, you can contaminate the source. Now, after the non return, you have the washout. The two gadgets you see here, this is called a Danforce pressure switch. This one is a pressure gauge. Once we put the basin, then we get the water in the basin and see, see the quality of water. Mm -hmm. 
We are going yeah, to do maintenance okay. of the strainer, which is at the entrance of the pump house. Um, why we do this is to check the quality of water that we are receiving. This is part of the uh, preventive maintenance that has to be done. You first shut down the other valve, the main valve, and then you come here and open. It has to be removed. Bring it out properly and look at it. Which is inside? Uh, look at what is inside. Yeah. Make sure there are no stones. Okay, this is a stone, a small stone which was from uh, what was assembled. Mm -hmm. Normally that happens because of the first installation. Uh, it was still settling in, so, but there's no more stone that has come, so it means there's no problem now. So there are no stones. There would be many if there was a problem. You can touch and see that there's no sand. Then the pump is okay. It will be, it has no problem. Then you wash it and we put it back. In the case anything be beyond this level goes through, then we capture it as a reservoir, the filter. That filter is able to clean it up and then prepare it for irrigation. When you're washing, you can buy a simple brush, the, the brush for scrubbing, yeah? brush for cleaning. Yeah, you just pass it here and you clean. This is the main gate valve. It brings, it has the valves from the main line and then valves to the sub main. The main line comes from the tank. It's what brings water and distributes to the sub mains. Then the sub mains take water to the blocks from which the laterals tap off. So the water is now coming into the blocks, but it's not really uh, reaching the plants. This is our other block valve. The, okay, the valve that controls the block. So when I turn it on, the water will start, we shall start irrigating. So you can see, we start our irrigation. The irrigation is timed, so we are going to water or run the system, run a particular block for a certain period of time, depending on the design and the crop. A farmer will be provided with a schedule. They will know, depending on their crops, so they will know how long the system should run for a block in order for us to have irrigated just what is enough for the crop. Now we are trying to run two blocks at the same time. You can't rush through this because if you're going to run two blocks, the amount of water that each block is receiving is going to be reduced. Now if your system is timed to run for one hour, the water that you're giving, uh, that you'll be irrigating into each block will not be enough. So I request the farmers to try and stick to the schedule. We are running two blocks now and now you can see now we're only running one block. You can see the difference between the, inter the volume of water that is being given out and the radius of throw. So we can be able to get enough water in the other block if you're running one at a time and basing on the design. Your time. For every block. No jacket. No jacket. As you're running your system, you could find that the water is not flowing or the, the, the spray is not as even as possible. You try to check on your lines, walk along your lines and see whether every hole is spraying to the right diameter. What they are trying to do is show you what you can do in case you're not seeing the right diameter of spray. If it's not working for you, you can maybe tap on where the hole is. They are very visible along the line. You can tap and see, but the, diam the diameter of spray that you get from every line is three meters. In case that doesn't work out, you unplug the line and remove its end cap and flush the whole line. You see, the you see? There are, there's dirt in our see line, so we are flushing see. that line and that can explain why we were having some blockages where we're not having an even spray as expected. When you feel that you've done the flashing or the cleaning of your line, you can plug, put back the end line and replace the line the way it was. And then you go back and check your spray. You see, you can see the spray is now better compared to where we started from. Okay, we go to the passions, eh? 
the straightening of the lines in the morning. As you are pumping or you're waiting for the tank to fill, you have to go through your garden and try to see whether your, your laser spray pipes are straight and straighten them up. Maybe uh, checking for any leakage. Are they straight? Are the end lines on? You could find that maybe that someone walked through or a child or something tampered with the system and you found that the end line is off. So there are things you check out for. You straighten the lines. We do this to make sure that there is water everywhere that is needed. Otherwise, if the lines are not straight, we shall not get water everywhere and some plants will not get enough water. So we're now ready to turn on our valves and run this block as well. Mr. Sonko, please turn on the valve. There is a radius of 1.5 to either side. Our laterals are spaced 3 meters apart. So that one line gives you 1.5 and then the next line is also giving you 1.5. When you're done harvesting, you can start clearing the field. Make sure they're not kinked and just keep it, keep the rolls at the end of the block. Okay, now it is straight, but then when you see here, it's kinked. It still has another kink. So you fold and bring here. If you are turning it and it gets kinked, so you, you don't continue. Straight. Because this one normally affects the pipe quality. It can create, uh, it can create uh, leakages. You don't force, you just go slowly. Yeah, continue. Uh huh. Good. Yeah. Good. So when you are putting it, make sure this place, <coughs> this place here where it connects, it is not because it can. You can put it in a way that, like for example, if I do this, if I do this, you see that this is bad. We expect that after doing this, you are plowing tomorrow or today. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it's really informative. You can see how insightful it was in terms of you know what the guys are doing in the ground, teaching those farmers on how to use those systems wisely, really get the maximum out of them because that's what it's about, right? These are investments that the government's done for the farmers to really benefit from. And we, as a company, we want them to really get those competency levels up there so they get a real good reward out of it. High value crops, export market, I want you to share, like, subscribe, tell everyone about these videos because honestly, these videos are going like fire. I see Mercy is still number one in terms of the most views. I need to beat her, so you need to help a brother out here. And I hope you stay tuned for the next video. So share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.